Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Now this is going to be a Q&A video. I think I might be breaking this, breaking this into two parts. I don't know. We'll see how well we get through the questions. There are quite a few so just to make it easier and you guys are on a tilt, sorry. Um, I'll just see where we're at. Um, but anyways, thank you for the kind words and support in the previous video of kind of just updating you guys on a true crime case. I know a lot of you have your opinions about, you know, how, you know, I should probably put out a face that I haven't put out a face there like on there before and I'm just doing it out of the respect of the families. I know I kind of mentioned this in the comments but I just feel like <laughs> saying it out loud would be a lot you know sometimes when you're typing stuff it doesn't like it kind of either comes across as harsh or anyways. My point is this I every case is different and every case has a different face to it. And I'm just doing what is respectful to the family and what they wish is mostly for, you know, the mother, the daughter, the granddaughter's face to be out there rather than the person who has been charged and uh, found guilty of the crime. And, you know, I just want to pay respect to that because one day as... I mentioned in the video maybe they will come across the video and I just want to be as respectful as I can be and I know a lot of you agreed to the fact that yeah like once this is all f figured out and we get it there we should just plaster his face across the internet and I, I get that and I get why you want to do that but also just remember we want to be respectful to the family's wishes and what they want related to the case. Um, whereas another case that I did that was brought into the comments as why I put the accused face all over, well not all over, but kind of like in the video of the, I guess, clip screen thing where you guys, I don't even know what the fuck it's called, but um, you know, Again, that's kind of what the case was drawn to, was the accused rather than the victims. They wanted to stay more private. And again, we have to respect that those wishes, right? We can't just have it one way for all cases. We have to tend to every case as an individual case and, you know, look for what is respectful towards that case and the families involved. Um, Again, I know that kind of seems a bit like, well, you were doing it one way for the other, so why can't you do it for the other? It's just in a more respectful way of, you know, the families and what they wish. So, sorry, that's my little P's and Q's, and I know probably I'm going to get a little backlash for that. And, you know, again, I welcome everybody's opinion, but just remember, we it's the families we have to be respectful for and what the case is based on. And I try to do that the best I can. Um, so just try to remember that to keep the family's top priority rather than our own wants and needs. Again, that kind of sounds a little bit harsh, but, you know, we just want to put forth what the families want. Okay, so onwards to the Q&A. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to start off, we're just going to go down the list. I have my trusted tablet here with the, the questions. So we're just going to go down the list and we'll see how far we get. First question is, what problem are you currently grappling with? Ooh, this one's actually an interesting one. Um, it's actually related to my job. Um, I'm just grappling with I have been thrown into all areas of the company that I work for, which is great. It's good experience. I'm not, you know, it's just, I'm just grappling with a lot of things related to that as if, you know, I, I'm really, there's a lot of stress that comes with this new department, which is fine. I can handle the stress 
it's just the way that everything is going about and just my hours and stuff it's just a lot of things to outweigh the pros and cons and that's kind of what I'm grappling with I know that kind of sounds a little bit shady but I also don't want to throw out too many details related to the company because in itself it's a really really good company it's just my personal stuff that I have to grapple with and without giving too much details out about the company it's you know, I just want to be respectful. It's just something personal, personally that I'm battling with is, you know, do I want to stay and deal with all that stuff or kind of go my own route? It's just a lot to balance and, um, you know, try to figure out, right? Adult life. Uh, describe eye candy. Oh, okay. So I think this depends on the person, you know, everybody has their type of what they would relate to this, but I guess eye candy is, which sounds so, I don't know. I don't like that word, <laughs> but like, I don't know if you like going out for coffee, let's say, or whatever, and you see a good looking person, quote unquote, some people say that's eye candy. Like they're really good. Like, mm, they're really good to look at, but they won't touch type of thing. Again, that kind of sounds <laughs> so like bad, but I mean, in simple terms, they're just nice to look at. They're pretty. <laughs> like, I don't know. Do you think uh, children born today will have a better or worse life than their parents? That honestly depends on the situation. And again, it, it could be a, it could be a very complicated situation. So, I mean, it depends, right? Our world is changing every day you know there's, there's a pandemic going on you know so that's really changed you know how people like live you know and pe children that were born into the pandemic w world quote unquote it's very different you know there's not a lot of human contact right but it, that's up to the parents to again i'm not trying to tell anybody how to parent like how they want to gear their children towards being socialized you know those there's a lot more ways to be socialized than just going out and hanging out with a bunch of people right even for babies and stuff i know for my parents i'm just sharing experiences again i'm not telling anybody to go out and fucking do this just you know do what's best for you i know from my parents you know yeah me and my brother did have some friends you know that we always like hung out with and stuff but as kids you know my parents made it fun you know we went on adventures together we went on family walks we were very outgoing with each other and we were socialized you know we were taught you know manners and all that stuff but it's all about how you socialize your children within the household or, or outside the household you know you can't just depend on other people to do it for you again that's just my opinion you know i was in you know early child care development i have a background in that so that's just kind of what i've learned through it um again it also depends on if uh you know the parents of the children want to want to break family cycles and what I mean by that is, so what if the parents were alcoholics or an abusive parent, okay? Or they were into drugs or whatever. Dumb as, you know, they know the parent of the soon-to-be children or children, what they went through as with their family. So do they want to break that cycle and be like, are we going to be the same? You know, abusive parents, alcohol parents, uh, drug-addicted parents again just a few examples um and do they want their children to go through what they went through type of thing you know um and are they willing to break that cycle it all depends on the situation i can't say you know for sure if it's going to be good or bad it all depends on the situation and the family lifestyle i'm not here to pick and prod at anybody these are just my opinions and you know experiences that i went through so again that's not a really easy you know thing to say but again it just depends on the situation and what the parents to the children want to do with their lives you know do you eat food that's past expiry date uh no i do not um no 
uh, you know, even if it smells fine, no, I don't want to take that chance. Again, I have a background, I have a background in a few things, not to toot my own horn, in baking and cooking and just nutrition and just learning about all that food and stuff. And guys, you do not want to eat anything past the due date. Even if it smells and looks fine, please do not do that. It is gross what could happen to your body and, you know, you just don't want to take that chance, okay? Just saying. But, again, do you. What's the worst backhanded compliment you could give somebody? I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can say to somebody. Okay, I don't want... Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Our world is very sensitive today. So you really, unfortunately, have to watch your P's and Q's. And, again, this is why people have a, you know, worry about raising their children in this environment. It's just, a lot of people are sensitive. And I'm not... It's just, you know... <laughs> I don't even know how to say this without sounding much like a dick, but here we go. Yeah, our world is very sensitive, and basically anything you say to somebody could be taken the wrong way. Blah, blah, blah. Wrong way. Okay, whatever. Wrong way because people are very sensitive, okay? And it's just... I don't know what the worst like backhanded compliment could be because it could be anything for anybody and I know that sounds very like but it's true I mean even saying hello to somebody could set somebody off it's just I I don't know it, it that makes me very sad okay like honestly you can say it like hello and somebody can be like oh my god you give me so much attitude and it's just like what I just said hello <laughs> like so it's just like giving somebody a, a compliment could be taken the complete wrong way like if you see somebody in a dress or a suit and you say wow you look good or that dress looks good on you you know some people can be like, well, that, does that make me look like a slight? And did it, like, we just complimented you. Like, chill. Like, take a chill pill or relax yourself, girl, type of thing. Because it's just like, you could literally give somebody a nice comment and somebody can turn around and just. So, I mean, I don't know <laughs> because of that, right? What old person things do you do? Hmm. In this day and age, read, right? I know that sounds like very like, really? But I mean, a lot of people don't read books anymore. They have like tablets and all that stuff. And granted, I have tablets, but I really like book covers and how they feel and smell. That sounded creepy, but I mean, some people like... I can literally, um, like, for example, like, the other day, I was out at a bus stop, and I was waiting, that was, sorry, I was waiting for a bus, and I was reading a book, and this, like, I swear to God, 16-year-old was like, that's so old, why are you reading a book? Like, bitch, I'm sorry, I'm not that old, I'm not even 30 yet, I'm almost there, but, like, come on now, first of all, don't talk to a person like that. Watch your attitude. And it's just like, it's a damn book. Like, chill. Um, but yeah, I mean, I read, I write, I tend to go to bed early. <laughs> I'm not a partier. So like, man, if I'm in bed by eight, I'm just chilling, watching TV. Like, that's an old person thing. But here I am. Like, you know, hey. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. Did you do anything in your class for your teacher uh, to think you were discussing? Oh, okay, from that video. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, unless, like, minding my own business and not um, giving in to my ex's kind of 
shenanigans, like, by bringing in his girlfriend and making out in class. And, like, me, I'm just sticking to my own little kernel, kernel, corner of the classroom. Just completely, just not phased. Just absolutely minding my own business. And I got in trouble for that. Because she came into the class. And just because, what, I wasn't giving them attention, that made me get in trouble, and then that pissed off my teacher, and the rest is history. Like, I know that sounds very, like, really? But seriously, that, that, that's a thing. Like, they would literally come into each other's classrooms, because, like I said, I, they wanted no, us to have no contact, but here we were, they were in every single one of my classes. You know, the girls would come in, or you know, the guys would come into the classroom and just try to, like, provoke me, and even if I didn't give in to them, and they were talking to me, and I wasn't talking back, like, I would be, like, writing, or just, like, completely minding my own business, I was provoking them, and then I would get into trouble, and then that would piss off the teachers, like, fucking do your job, and tell them to get the fuck out of the classroom, you know, but no. But yeah, so that's basically why it was called disgusting. Good times. Who do I go out of my way to be nice to? Um, you know, here's the thing. I'm a nice person in general. Again, not to toot my own horn. Like, I'm not a stuck-up person. I'm very warm and down-to-earth. So, I don't have to force myself to be nice. Um, you know, there was a time during, you know, my high school years where I kind of, like, had to force to be nice type of thing. Like, not nice, but civil um, to certain people. <laughs> A.K.A. basically the whole school. Um... But now that, like, I'm, you know, almost in my 30s and stuff, it's just to the point where it's just, like, I'm not going to force to be somebody I'm not. And, you know, in certain situations where I deal with customers in my business um, that I work, well, yeah, of course, you have to, like, you don't really know them, so you kind of have to, like, put on this fake smile and act all happy and stuff. And it's just, like, not trying to forcibly be nice, but just, like, kind of put on that facade of, like, bitch, I've been working seven hours, like, don't give me attitude type of thing, but you just kind of have to smile there and take that, you know, <laughs> like, but hey, that's just kind of how it goes, right? Did you ever get the chance to sit down and talk to your parents about what you went through? No, not as of yet. There's been a lot of life situations going on that hasn't really given me the time to sit down one-on-one -on -one and just kind of lay it all out there and that's kind of like a heavy topic <laughs> and you know not to say that it would be awkward it would be a very hard conversation to have with your parents definitely because, you know, they, I, I have a feeling and I've known that they've known certain things and certain, certain situations they did, they were well aware of what was going on. Um, like that one time where I walked home and walked out of going on a trip because they were forcing me to be there and my mom basically told off the vice principal, like, you put her in this situation, like, basically, fuck you. Um, they knew, they know certain situations, but they don't know the extent of it. And again, talking about that with a parent or a loved one is a very heavy topic. And again, there's been a lot of life situations where I've basically made the decision of now is not the time. <laughs> um, again, there's not a, a perfect time, but you know, there are really heavy situations going on right now. So I'd rather not, um... Again, there's no perfect time, but, you know, I have to judge it where I think it's like, okay, this isn't the perfect time, but, you know, this is the time to do it type of thing. And, you know, hopefully, um, given the situation, maybe in a few years, I know that sounds stuff, but there is a situation going on. So, 
but yeah, you know, eventually I do plan on it. It's a heavy topic again, so, you know, yeah. And in case they do come across my YouTube channels, I can see why they might be pissed off, but, you know, they also have to understand that sometimes it's a lot easier to talk to an outside source than rather a family. I mean, they don't have to understand that, but it would be nice, but, um, you know, I ha I never did handle the situation with Grace and, you know, given, you know, working through all my trauma, like, who the fuck would be able to handle that with Grace, right? And, you know, I did put my parents through a lot, again, with my attitude and just acting out. Well, not necessarily acting out, just doing things that weren't exactly, you know, fantastic. Um or how they raised me, that type of thing. But, you know, I've learned, grown from that. And, you know, it will be an experience to share with them one day. <laughs> is there still that offer to publish your book? Yes, the offer is always going to be there. It's just when I have the money and, you know, <laughs> eventually one day when I do have that. But yes, that is always an open door for me, which is a thing and which I'm grateful for. Why do you think people target other people? Honestly, I don't know. N no clue. Like, maybe they're not happy with themselves or they're jealous. Like, not a mind reader, I don't know, but usually those are the kind of, like, you know, they're jealous of somebody or they really don't like their life and they just want to make somebody else's life miserable, that type of thing, you know? But again, I'm not them so I can't really say well why do you why you know they did this so why did they do that I can just guess and even that guessing is kind of like eh. I don't like to do because again every situation is different what do you like to do with your friends oh well my friend group is very small um, but we usually go for car rides, we get food, we hang out, we watch movies, um, I go on my friend's motorcycle, <laughs> sorry mom, um, but yeah, I go on my friend's motorcycle, we go for bike rides, um, we go for long walks, walks and hikes, um, yeah, we just sit and talk, have a beer together, you know, it's just, it's very chill, relaxed, we don't really do anything spontaneous, we don't go partying, we never have, and never will, <laughs> um, yeah, we just chill mostly, um, or I work out with, a, well, not now, but when I, when, you know, pre-COVID, um, my friends own a uh, MMA gym, so I would go there, work out, help out there and stuff. And it's really, it's just fun to hang out with people, you know. Um, what do you do, what do you like to do when you're alone? Oh, simple things. Read, write, cook, bake, watch TV, work out, listen to music. Not very exciting shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in a very exciting person, but yes, very just. How many relationships have I had in my life and which ones were the best, etc.? Okay. First of all, I hate when people compare relationships. Like, that is just my fucking. I, I hate it because when you're sitting there and you're like, you know dating somebody and they're like well you know my my ex used to do this and I really liked it when they did that and you're like you're just sitting there going uh-huh uh-huh mm hmm or when they say my ex and I did this a lot and uh we did it all the time and you're kind of like oh okay uh-huh mm hmm it's just like well I'm not that person. Like, if you want to go be with that person, go be with that person. Like, stop comparing or, like, rubbing it in my face type of thing. Like, I hate it when people compare relationships. And, I mean, talking about past relationships, it's fine. It's just when it gets to the point when they're, like, nitpicking and comparing 
and kind of like rubbing it in like hint hint when quink you need to do this more right and you're just like bitch like really just shut up like if you don't like me for who I am you're dating me like get the fuck out of my life um I haven't been in that many relationships okay uh high school everybody knows that story um I was in a few years later I was in another one another relationship that ended in a catastrophe it was just a shit show um where the parties involved were just not ready and it's just it was a shit show then I got into a really really good relationship um which we ended up ending because he was serving in the Canadian Arms Forces and he went overseas he's back now um you know, I I learned things about myself in each relationship. It's, um, then I was in another one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've learned different things about myself in each relationship. And I'm not going to sit here and compare them because that's just not who I am. I'm just going to say that besides my high school and the one after years later... I, I'm thankful for the experiences, minus high school, hold that thought, that I went through in each of the relationships. High school was a completely different ball game. I really wish that I didn't go through that, but also at the same time, it helped in a weird way make who I am today. Um, so there's that. I know that's a very complicated thing, but yeah, I'm not one to fucking compare. So I've basically only been in four relationships. I know. I'm really a boring-ass person. But I am going to leave it there. There are a few more questions to go, but I am going to do a part two because those are going to be longer answers. So part one is going to go up shortly, and then I'm going to do part two. Uh, so we should be getting them both out tonight, hopefully. Uh, knock on wood. But if not, then one will be out tonight and the other one will be out tomorrow. But I'm going to try to do both tonight. So fingers crossed for that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, guys. So remember, I will see you in part two shortly. Uh, until then, never give up. Always keep fighting. You're enough and you're very much loved. I hope you guys have enjoyed part one of the Q&A session this time around. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video.